Hi everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. it's Mike here and welcome to our another top 10 mocks video where we show all the cool creations made of Lego that people have been posting over the course of the last week. All the links to detailed galleries and Flickr accounts of those creators can be found in the description below. And also the latest mock added to our web store at the www.brickvault.toys is this Dawn of Justice Batmobile from Lucas. Check it out and also we have a lot of other Batmobiles in our collection. At the end of the episode I'm showing your fan creations that you guys are sending to our Brick Vault fan mocks email. If you want to submit more for next week, I'm gonna leave a link below and also the rules that go with that. As you know, I'm going through the mocks in somewhat of a top 10 manner, but uh, it doesn't mean that the number 10 is better or worse than the number 1, it's just a subjective opinion. This week we have a lot of Star Wars mocks because of the recent May the 4th, but I'm gonna throw in something different as well. Number 10 here is the B-59 Blacktron Armored Personal Carrier or APC, this is by Builder Norton 74 that we are very familiar with. And there are basically two reasons I like this mock so much, APC, military look and Blacktron, one of my favorite old school themes ever. A really cool brick build vehicle, looks heavy and probably packs a punch, there is even a smaller one, just like in many Blacktron sets. We've got classic Blacktron minifigures and this thing looks so much more realistic and usable than many other Blacktron vehicles visible in the sets. Or Norton also made a really cool video showcasing all the features of this mock. So instead of showing all of it, I recommend checking this out, there is a link in the video description below. The interior includes the crew compartment, a surveillance station and I think some sort of an armory. We've got a turret at the top and overall everything looks like a very believable riot control vehicle. And also a great way to start off this mock's episode. Moving up to number 9, we have a simple but pretty cute build based on the very popular Fortnite game. I don't play the game personally, but I know millions of people are, so I'm probably the last one to not play it. This build is made by Mike Nevis and this is the Loot Llama, a feature that was added recently as of this recording to Fortnite and it's basically a piñata with loot in it. When you smack it with your pickaxe, it provides more loot than your usual uh, crate or treasure box. Fortnite is experiencing a massive growth right now and Ninja being probably the most successful YouTuber and Twitch streamer in all the time, like in the quickest way possible, so I'm not really surprised about the Lego builds based on the game popping up here and there recently. This one is simple but so are the graphics in the game and I think it captures this elusive creature or just piñata very well. This next one is coming from Nick Sweetman and is taking on the popular quote somehow, come to the dark side, we have cookies that is on many t-shirts whatnot. And here we have the quote visualized in the form of a very nice 16 by 16 vignette. In this minimalistic build we've got Darth Vader, instead of a mask he has a cook's cap and the scene shows him just taking the cookies off the oven and providing them for the loyal stormtroopers. And even though the build looks so simple I do love the aesthetics, the use of pieces for the cabinets in that Imperial Death Star kitchen and especially those clear blue bricks uh, making the walls of the room. Excellent use of custom stickers, especially like the box with dark side cookies, I would really buy that if those were available in the nearest market, and seems like Vader is not that bad after all because the stormtroopers seem to have a blast. Also there is a black fish in one of the pots, don't ask me why. The number 7 can be actually exequo with number 8, I just don't know which one is better for me. This is also a Star Wars vignette. This one comes from Lego Finn and this is the smallest representation of Yavin 4 I have ever seen. It's called Yavin 4, Base of Operations, so what it shows is just a fraction or just a small take from the Yavin 4 base. Probably it comes from the Rebel landing pad just next to the hangar buildings on the Yavin 4 temple, but you really cannot be disappointed with the amount of details this small thing provides. We can see the Rebel pilot, there is a technician on one side, some excellent detail on the ground of the landing pad, I think some crates with thermal detonators, elements of the ancient temple with some foliage growing on them, and also some spare parts for parked Y-Wings, X-Wings and whatnot. It's surprising how recognizable this is for every Star Wars fan, you don't really have to name it Yavin 4, you just know it's Yavin. And I think this is what makes this small mock excellent. The wall building technique alone deserves some praise, definitely, but the overall feel is definitely something I'm looking for in every Star Wars mock. And going up to number 6, this is a build that would go very well with one of my favorite sets that would be the Ninja Go City. This comes from Space Brick and this is a ramen and sushi bar. A small build that would go very well along the coast or the side of the Ninja Go City and even better with the upcoming Ninja Go Dogs set. The minifigs here come from the Ninja Go collectible minifigure series. 
I love how he used the similar techniques used in the Ninja Go City and that is probably the main reason it fits so well. Awesome details with the actual bar area, a part of the Ninja Go City street that looks like taken from the Ninja Go City Chase set and also the rooftop with a small apartment at the top adds a lot of flavor. Very charming build if I may and also could be a very good standalone piece if you really like Ninja Go. Recently we had a very awesome brick headset with Marty McFly and Doc and now the builder JP Velociraptor has built a really awesome uh, DeLorean to match those guys in size and they do actually fit. This one is so good that I think they should include that in the actual brick heads set because in all the shape and form it just fits those guys perfectly. Has all the features of a proper DeLorean that means the wheels are in the flying mode from Back to the Future 3. The proportions and dimensions are very brick headsy if I may. And of course we have the wing doors and the trash processor for powering the vehicle with the power plant in the back. A definitely awesome build to complement a very awesome set. And if you like DeLoreans like we do you should check out the designer's Flickr page because he was really into modifying for example the ones from the original idea set. Check those out. And going to number 4 I have chosen something that I felt was quite original but at the same time feels a bit nostalgic. This comes from Mika Baideman and that is his reimagination of the getaway of the Squid set and Atlantis set from 2010. The original one was pretty cool but this one is so much more menacing and really creepy looking. I love the build for the squid, it looks like an alien creature to me. Using a lot of tires and I think maybe flexi cubes inside uh, finished with those tentacle parts definitely looks intimidating and I love the eyes built by using those printed domes. And even the head, I mean everything about this build is super otherworldly. The vignette for the Atlantis is also very beautifully made and when it comes to reimagining the classic sets I think this one takes the cake for a long time. I think this set takes the most creative spot of the week. Alright, I think the top 3 for this week is pretty solid. With number 3 we are starting a run with the I Saw Spider-Man by Barthes Brick. And I have to say this has to be one of the nicest looking corners of a busy street I have seen built in Lego for a quite a long time. Of course it's a scene featuring Spider-Man and we do have a part of the New York City. But I mean look at those buildings, the corner one I think it's kind of uh, inspired by maybe the recent Infinity War um, Sanctum Sanctum showdown set but it definitely packs much more detailing. The facade of the building is beautiful with balconies, people, plants, whatnot all over the place, even the withering of the building itself. The water tower at the top, a lot of busy things happening on the street with the chase of Spider-Man against a thug ongoing as we see. Road works, I love this effect on the road being cut out of the vignette. We have some vendors with hot dogs, there is a taxi cab, I mean there is a lot going on, the set feels very very alive. The next building looks also like a smaller townhouse of New York, a tree next to it, I mean I can go on and on but you can just see how amazing this looks. The Spider-Man for me is just a cherry on top of the cake because this build would defend itself without him being in the scene. And the mansion cup by the way deserves its own spot because this is one of the best looking cars I've seen in this size and shape. Insane build for number 3. But for number 2 I think I have something even better. This is Grant Davis, a builder we know already. For example he is one of the designers with JK Brickworks of the pop-up book and also he is responsible for a really amazing ski speeder that we mentioned some time ago. On this build he was working together collaborating with another great builder Ellie Wilsey aka Forlorn Empire that we feature all the time on our episodes. And the guys come back with pure epicness showing the massive scene called the scavenging the destroyer. That is the scene that's opening the force awakens when Rey descends into an abandoned star destroyer on Jakku. And yes this is all a lego and pretty much fully in minifigure scale if I may. The most impressive thing though is that Grant has posted a time lapse of the build on youtube with a very high quality footage showing him building the entire thing from scratch. I'm more than impressed because as being mock builders ourselves we know what it takes to create insanely big uh, Star Wars mocks. As you know we are right now building the Sandcrawler on a series of streams but this thing doesn't even compare to what Grant Davis did. Add to that some perfect usage of lightning and very uh, detailed uh, professional photography and you've got yourself something that can be defending itself on many many LEGO conventions for years to come. I am truly impressed and I would like to just congratulate Grant Davis for completing this amazing project. 
And number one I think is one of the most epic builds that I've seen this year. The complexity and the amount of work that went into this is quite staggering. This one is called the Benny's Spaceship Adventure and there is basically a full size pinball game made out of Lego entirely. This comes from Renegade Bricks and the build has its own feature article on Brothers Brick as well, check it out I'm gonna leave a link below. And I don't even know where to start, we have everything about Benny the Spaceman. Each one of the props on the table of the pinball game is uh, pretty much its own mock in a very cool way. On the top you can see the Benny's spaceship spaceship spaceship, I'm not sure if that is the official set or a bit modified mock. A lot of other things are happening on the tabletop as well but of course as I mentioned this is functioning, you can actually play it. The Brothers Brick have made a detailed video about the features and the functionality of the set so go check it out, I'm gonna leave a video link below. And I'm just loving it that I can find such insane builds every week for you guys to show. I think this one takes the cake for being maybe one of the best this year so far. Alright guys and that's gonna be it for this week's top 10 mocks, thanks so much for watching, as always you can leave a like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our videos and don't forget to hit that notifications button because that bell tells you every time we upload a video. Now it's the segment where I'm showing your fan creations that you guys have been sending to our Brick Vault fan mocks email, again if you wanna send more for next week the rules can be found in the description below, following them just helps us out as we get a lot of submissions every week. And without too much more talking I hope you enjoyed this week fan mock section. Thanks so much for watching again, it was Mike and I'll see you next time on Brickball. <laughs>